So, hey everybody, thank you for coming to my talk and staying uh, so late. So today we're going to talk about effortless profiling on Kubernetes. A little bit about myself. So my name is Eden. I'm currently an engineer at uh, Yahoo. I've been coding for almost 15 years now. I'm really into everything, observability and profiling. I think that uh, finding performance issues in production is my hobby. And uh, I created one of the tools that I'm going to show you to here today uh, called KubeCTL Flame. So uh, today we're first going to start by a uh, little bit of introduction to what is profiling and how, how do you analyze a profile. Uh, what's the best way to visualize a profile? The, uh, secondly, we're going to talk about some of the challenges uh, in general in profiling, and secondly, in, uh, specifically in, uh, when profiling in Kubernetes. And lastly, we're going to do uh, some demo. Uh, I'm going to try to profile uh, multiple applications and uh, do it first manually and then uh, by using kubectl flame. So, Profiling is the act of analyzing the performance of applications in order to improve poorly performance section of code. And simple words is basically profiling is the process you do when you have some slow running application and you want to understand why this application runs so slowly. Uh, one of the most popular ways to visualize a profile to present a profile is by generating something that is called flame graph. Uh, flame graphs look something like that. It's uh, multiple stack traces stacked on top of each other. Uh, basically, the y-axis is the stack depth. It's basically the stack trace itself. The x-axis is the sample population. Basically, the wider the flame is, uh, the longer a method uh, called took. Uh, the color is usually used in order to differentiate between different type of, uh, of method calls. For example, here, uh, green can be Java code, red can be C code, and orange can be some, I don't know, kernel space code. And the order is usually not that important. Uh, uh, flame graphs are usually ordered alphabetically. So I tried to, th to think about why profiling is so hard. And I think it comes down to two main reasons. Uh, the, the, the first is overhead, uh, simply the act of Profiling an application makes the application run slower. Uh, this is the main reason that most people try to avoid uh, profiling in production because we don't want to hurt our uh, production applications. Uh, secondly, is that if I have some application that is not ready to be profiled yet, it's not uh, profilable, I need to, to modify the code in uh, multiple ways in order to uh, be able to profile the application. Uh, for example, in languages like Node.js or Python, you have to add uh, some flags to the execution command. Or if you are working, for example, in Golang, you have to import some library into your code, like a pprof library. Uh, choosing the right profiler might solve those two problems, but knowing which profiler to choose is not an easy task by itself. It's something that is highly dependent both on the programming language and on the operating system, and it requires a research. So those two pain points are only getting harder when dealing uh, with applications running on top of Kubernetes. So uh, let's say we want to add a profiler to our container image. We need to, prof to modify the image itself. We need to include the relevant profiler binary uh, and then modify the application code. After we did all those changes, we have to uh, build the modified image, push it to some registry and deploy it to our cluster. This very deployment may trigger an application restart. And when you are dealing with a performance issue, you don't want to restart your application because some performance issues, for example, like memory leaks, uh, may disappear when application restarts. So uh, we wrote a tool to try to handle all those uh, complexities. It's a kubectl plugin uh, called kubectl flame. Um, so it's a kubectl plugin. You can ins easily install it uh, via crew. Crew is a package, man package manager for uh, kubectl. 
Uh, it's a really cool project. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, KubeCTL Flame aims to make profiling effortless by, uh, by removing the need to do code modifications and by doing profiling without having to do restart to your applications or causing any downtime. The way it works is that KubeCTL Flame is basically a facade for choosing the best profiler for every task. So if we're trying to profile a Golang application, it will choose an eBPF-based profiler. If we try to do a profile for Java or any JVM-based, it will choose async profiler. For Python, it will be PySpy, and for Ruby, it will be RBSpy. And many more languages are coming soon. So the way it basically works, it's, so it's a kubectl uh, plugin, so it's basically a, a command line interface application that communicates with the Kubernetes API server. It detects uh, which node the, the target container is scheduled on, and it creates another container, the profile co profiler container, uh, which, which uh, contains all the profiler binaries. Um, those containers are sharing the same process IDs namespace and the same file system uh, via hostpath. Uh, this way, we can inject the profiler into a running container, a running pod, without having to do uh, any code modifications or any restarts. So, uh, enough with presentations, let's do some profiling. Um, so, in order to demonstrate uh, this tool, this profiling, I'm going to use a microservices demo from Google Cloud. It's like a, a demo of an e-commerce app, which contains like 10 microservices in five different programming languages and even some Redis database. We are going to focus on two main applications, one in Java and one in Python. The Java one is an ad service, the application that is responsible for displaying advertisements. And in Python, it's the recommendation service. It's the application that is responsible for uh, showing recommendations on products. So just to give you like a, an idea what is this application, it's simple e-commerce site. You can buy products. Okay, to the demo. So um, I already have this application deployed here locally on my Minikube cluster. So let's start with uh, doing the profiling first manually, and then we'll try to improve this process using kubectl flame. So the first thing we need to do is to modify the container images to include profiler. So let's start with the recommendation service. I'm going to go ahead and modify the image. Uh, so the, I already did the research and choose and chose to use PySpy Profiler because it's a Python application. There are many other profilers you can use. And uh, to, add it, to simply add it to the container image, I'm going to add a, a pip install PySpy command. And uh, I already have Scaffold running in the background. And Scaffold is like a local CI CD that automatically watches all the files that I'm changing and it's going to build the image for me and push it to a registry and deploy it to the cluster once I will save this Docker file. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's watch him do his thing. Let's wait a second. And, and we should have a freshly created recommendation service. You can see by the age. So, now we have the profiler installed on top of the recommendation service. Let's go ahead and invoke it. So the first thing you need to do is to execute uh, into the pod and then invoke the profiler. Um, the way you invoke the PySpy profiler is by running those commands. So. What these commands do is basically saying, let's profile uh, the process ID number one for 10 seconds and save it as a slash tmp slash profile.svg file. So let's go ahead and invoke this profiler. <clears throat> okay, 
great. So now we created a profile. Um, let's copy over this file to, the, to my machine so we can uh, uh, watch it on, on the browser. So I'm going to use a kubectl cp uh, from slash tmp slash profile.svg to here, let's call it react.svg. Okay, and now we can open And we can open our lovely flame graph and see uh, exactly what our recommendation service is doing and analyze it and find all the bugs and the poorly performing uh, code sections. So now let's do the same, but for the Java service. So again, we're going to edit the container image. Uh, for Java, I already did the, the research and I chose to, to run it with async profiler. Uh, this time we are going to add it to the, the container image. Uh, a little bit differently, we're going to do wget, download the latest release from GitHub, extract it, uh, the, the tar gzip file, and move it to slash opt slash profiler. Again, I will save this file and scaffold will build the, <coughs> the image for me and uh, deploy it to the cluster. Let's wait a second. Great. And now, if we do a kubectl get pods, we should have a newly created ad service with the age of eight seconds. And now we can execute into this pod again and invoke the profiler. So let's go to the profiler directory. And again, we're going to run this command, which basically says pro profile for 10 seconds, the process ID number one, and save it at slash tmp slash profile dot html. Okay, great. So now let's do the same trick. Let's copy it over to my machine. Call it ads.html. And now we can open it and see again what our Java application is doing and analyze this profiling. So let's recap for a minute what we just did, all this manual process. First, we had to do we had to do research. We had to find out what is the best profiler, first for Python and secondly for Java. The second step we had to do is to add it to the container. Uh, as you saw, in every profiler, there is a different way to add it uh, to the container. Sometimes you install it via a package, man a package manager like pip. Sometimes you have to do a wget and extract it. There are many different ways. Uh, the, third step, the third step is to actually execute into the container and invoke the profiler. There are two main issues with this step. First, executing to, into the container and uh, running this command actually assumes there is some uh, uh, shell, shell uh, on the container, on the image, which is not always true. For example, if you're using a really tiny image like distroless or images like that, you don't always have shell in your container image. So this whole manual process might not even work. But let's say you do have a shell. You still have to execute into the, into the container and run some kind of command. Every profiler have a different API. You need to understand and read the documentation and know what are the command line arguments and what every argument does. And after you did all this, you still have to go ahead and copy the file over to your machine so you can examine it and open it and visualize it in a, some kind of browser, for example. So overall, not a very friendly process. Uh, let's try to make it better. So the first thing I'm going to do is to roll back the changes that I did. So we can remove the profiler from the image. I will save the files and scaffold will automatically deploy it for me. Great. 
So now let me show you how we're going to do it with kubectl flame. So for the purpose, I'm going to do it in uh, two terminals side by side. The right terminal is going to have some watch on kubectl get pods. This way we can see all the con on the pods that created in real time, and it will help us to understand better how kubectl flame works behind the scenes. And here I'm going to actually execute the commands. So as I said earlier, kubectl flame, it's basically a kubectl plugin. So after you install it, you simply use it like any other sub-command in kubectl. So you do kubectl flame. Let's start with the Java service. Uh, you need to specify which language, let's say Java. Uh, for how long? For 10 seconds. And let's save it at s2.svg. So once we run it, you can see that a new uh, profiler pod is created on the same node. It will start running. It will attach to the running ad service, uh, invoke the profiler automatically for us, and will uh, terminate when it finishes. And the file is also copied over to our machine. And another cool thing is that ad service, you can look at the age, did not restart it at all. So now I can open the file that it created. And again, we have the same flame graph as earlier. Let's do the same thing, but for the Python application. Again, from 10 seconds, and let's call it rec2.svg. Again, we, see, we can see that a new profiler uh, pod is created on the same node with the relevant profiler inside. It will attach to rec the recommendation service, uh, run the profiler, and terminate at the end. And again, we can open the same image, the same flame graph, and understand exactly what our recommendation service is currently doing. So this uh, kubectl plugin, this flame plugin, actually saves us from learning uh, which is the best profiler to use, what is the specific API details, uh, copying over the file, having to uh, restart our application, having to uh, have a shell on our container image. All those are uh, saved for us by this kubectl plugin. So this was for the demo. Let's go back to me. So actually the last thing that I wanted to talk about is like a few points for the future of profiling as I see it. Uh, there are three main features that are going to make profiling better in the future. The first thing is a newly feature in Kubernetes called ephemeral containers. Uh, it's, it's already in alpha in uh, version 1.22 uh, with the feature gate. Uh, basically, it brings a native support to Kubernetes to attach a, a container into a running pod without having to do all those workarounds that I'm currently doing. Uh, it will make profiling much more accessible without having to uh, use host path or process ID namespaces. The second idea is the uh, eBPF uh, new feature. eBPF by itself is a huge game changer regarding everything relating to profiling and observability. Uh, but it's a whole new topic uh, by itself. There are uh, tons of other talks here in KubeCon on specifically on eBPF. They recently added a new feature called Compile Once Run Everywhere, which makes running eBPF applications uh, much more easier. You don't have to have all those uh, Linux headers uh, inside your node or container. And the third, uh, the third uh, point is uh, continuous profiling tools. Uh, there are more and more uh, tools that try to make profiling a continuously running process with uh, flame graphs that are generated continuously and always on. Uh, I tried uh, a tool named Profiler a few days ago, which looks very promising and uh, there are lots of uh, work to do in this area, but uh, once those tools are become mature, uh, it will change the way we do profiling uh, for the best. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer.